showing you what's going to do this people's 15. Sir, do you recognize this? Yes, I do. And how so? Um, this is the schematic draw, um, drawing that was prepared um, by the school or some other agency as far as for the school <coughs> layout. Um, and th once again, this is the, the schematic that was used to place the piece of evidence on where they were located within the school outside of classrooms and where the victims were located within the school. Okay. These, and these notations were made by lab uh, personnel? Yes, it was, um, there was, there's some by myself and there's also by um, Rob Charlton who works in the firearms unit that's also a crime scene investigator uh, with me. So what do these notations signify? Um, there's numbers that are circled um, that, were, that would also coincide with the placards that were placed next to the piece of evidence within the crime scene. Um, for documentation purposes. Okay, when you say placard, we're going to go through some pictures soon, but if you see a yellow placard with a number, that's what you're referring to? That is correct. And why is that done? Um, it's used mainly um, for photographic reasons, but also helps us to keep um, straight each um, piece of evidence that was collected given a location um, of where it was within that crime scene. Okay, and photographs were taken in this situation? Yes, they were. Okay. Now I'm going to go through Okay, this is 15, and you said it was the 200 hallway? That was the wing the shooting was contained to? That is correct. Okay, so we see numbers, not, not the notations from the crime lab, but numbers of classrooms here. So 258, is that, that's in the number of a classroom? That is correct. Okay, and then to the far right, it goes to approximately 214, 213, is that right? That is correct. Okay. So we'll go one portion at a time here. Okay. Okay, so this is a zoomed in version of Zip 15. What does this depict? Um, this is um, an area outside of 258 and 256 where two of the victims were found um, that contained a large amount of evidence. Um, and then you can start to see where it turns to the north, um, which would be to the right of this photograph that would work your way up to the north, which is the remainder of the uh, 200 wing that contained more evidence outside the rooms from 249 all the way down to 213. Okay. So in the course of your investigation, did you come to learn what bathroom the shooter walked out of directly yep. before the shooting? Sorry. Yes, I was given the information that it was um, found just west of room 258. So that would be this bathroom here that's highlighted? That is correct. Okay. So, specifically now from what you recovered from the bathroom in this shorter wing of the 200 hallway, um, I'm going to take you through the path the shooter took with these pictures. Judge, some of these, two of these pictures have um, images that I'd ask the court to instruct the media not to film. Your Honor, I am not going to object to that. I am going to just indicate for the record, I believe that it's Exhibit 17 and Exhibit 26 that I will be objecting to renewing objections that I made previously on the record to those two photographs. Okay. Is that correct, Mr. Beeson? That's Both of those things are correct, and I do want the court to know that we did speak with the, the victims prior to, to the trials, and they understand. Okay, so you're um, right now presenting uh, Exhibit number 17? First it will be Exhibit 16, but then it's Exhibit 17 after that. Okay, so the, we're... Uh, both of those images cannot be shown Correct. to the press. And um, are the victims who are here are familiar with what those photos contain. Yes, Judge. So they, they are, they're, they're welcome to exit if they feel the need. Right? Thank you, Judge. Okay. So you, you, you guys get it, right? Which, the, which two? The next two, 16 and 17. After this. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll make sure before I display it on the screen to look at it. Okay. Right. Okay, so we'll start with the bathroom next to 258. That's exhibit 16 here. And what does this photograph depict? Um, this is in the stall um, within the bathroom, which would be found just west of room 258, that contained um, a red backpack and miscellaneous items such as electronic equipment, um, books, journals, there's a Gatorade bottle, amongst other miscellaneous items. Okay, so all of that was collected as evidence? That is correct. Just the next photograph is exhibit 17. I asked the media not to film this. Yes, could you um, refrain from that? I'm just going to do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. He's, he's filming, you're filming the witness. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. This is exhibit 17. What are we looking at here? 
Uh, this is a photograph taken outside of that bathroom that I just um, spoke of. This photograph is taken from the west to the east, showing the hallway that would be found just south of rooms 258 and 256. And you can start to see um, the yellow placards that I spoke of um, to depict the evidence that was found in that hallway area, along with uh, one of the victims that's found in the, the middle of this photograph, but on the right-hand side of the hallway when you're looking east. So that's, that's Hannah St. Juliana, and then the other victim is Madison Baldwin, is that correct? That is correct. It's hard to see on this photograph because it's far away, but it would be on the left-hand side of the hallway further east as you move down the hallway. Okay. So tell us what you recovered from this portion of the 200 hallway. Um, there were several fire cartridge cases. There were 14 found. Uh, 14 fire cartridge cases found in this um, portion of the hallway, along with several um, fired bullets and bullet fragments um, along this hallway area that were found in several areas um, of the hallway. What's a cartridge case? A cartridge case um, is a, um, a, the portion of a bullet that actually holds the bullet itself, and in a semi-automatic weapon, it will eject from the side of the weapon, so the bullet will go through the barrel portion or the end of the, the firearm, and the fire cartridge case will then eject more than likely out the right-hand side, depending on the, um, which firearm we're talking about. About 99% of semi-automatic weapons will eject to the right. So the bullet will go out the barrel, and the fire cartridge case that held that, that bullet um, portion will eject to the right-hand side of that weapon. Okay. So in order for it to be a fired cartridge case, that would have to mean that, that the, the gun was actually fired? That is correct. Okay. So with 14 fired cartridge cases, that would indicate that the gun was shot 14 times in this portion of the hallway? That is correct. Now, continuing down the shooter's path, I'm going to ask you what happened or what you located past rooms 256 as the hallway curves at 249. So this is room 258 on the left, next to that is room 256, and as it curves it's 249. Is that your recollection? That is correct. Okay. This is People's Exhibit 18, so this is further down the same portion of the 200 hallway? That is correct. It's just past the second victim on the left-hand side. All right. Tell us what was located here. Um, there was more uh, fired bullets and fired, um, uh, fired cartridge cases along um, with a empty gun magazine that was located just around the corner from this evidence here. Okay. Now, as that corner turns down the 200 hallway, this is People's Exhibit 19, I should say for the record, all these have been admitted. Counsel did state her objections on the record, but this court can rule upon. Yes. Thank right. you, Judge. Correct. This is Exhibit 19. What are we looking at here? Um, this is now a photograph taken from the south um, to the north as we're moving, I would say, down in the numbers, um, but it's up as far as, like, if you're thinking about going north, um, down the, the 200 wings. So you're moving away from that bathroom um, where everything may have started. Um, and this is once again indicating the evidence that was located um, from room 249 to 213, which ended up containing 18 more fired cartridge cases in this area. Okay. So we had 14 in the shorter port portion of the 200 hallway and 18 from room 249 to 213 down this long hallway? That is correct. Okay. And again, that means the firearm was fired 18 more times there, at least what you recovered? That is correct. This is Exhibit 20, specifically Placard 35. What's that? Um, so Placard 35, or number 35, is the firearms magazine that I spoke of um, that was found in the hallway there. Okay. Now, up and down this portion of the hallway specifically, did you find evidence that the shooter fired directly into classrooms as well? Yes, there were several classrooms that were um, found to be fired into. Okay. This is Exhibit 21, depicting Classroom 247. Uh, first of all, what's that, that rod that we're looking at? So it's what we'll consider what we call a, uh, a trajectory rod to show the path of the bullet that was fired um, at that location. Um, so it's just shown for kind of demo, uh, you know, demonstrative purposes that you can see where that bullet actually traveled into that room. Okay, so this indicates to us that the firearm, was, that the gun was shot directly into room 247. That is correct, right through the door um, trim there. This is Exhibit 22. This is depicting Classroom 244. What do we see here? 
Once again, a trajectory rod was inserted into the window portion. Um, it, it got shattered, but it still stayed intact. But you can see the trajectory rod showing where the bullet um, passed through the window that was fired in room 244. Okay. This is exhibit 12. It's, it's room 224. What do we see here? Um, you can see the room, uh, the, excuse me, the door to the room. There are three trajectory rods um, that were placed in it to show that there was three shots that were fired into room 224. Okay. This is exhibit 10. This is also room 224 but with the door open. That is correct. And you can see on the inside of the door, it's just um, the continuation of that trajectory rod um, to show um, you know, that there's, those shots were fired into that room. And we have Miss Darnell, Molly Darnell testified yesterday, this was her classroom. This is um, what you refer to in the window here? That is correct. Okay. And then the file cabinet? Yes, there was, um, I would say in the window is what we call a perforation. So one of the bullets passed through the door and then went through the window um, that was never found because it went out into the exterior of the school. Um, there was a... Um, a, what we call a ricochet that was found in the file cabinet, um, which is right there in the middle that the prosecutor is highlighting. Um, there was also um, what we call another ricochet that hit the, the, the chair, the backing of the chair, um, and then eventually a fired bullet was found embedded in a book that was found on the bookshelf behind the teacher's desk. Okay, thank you. And that's room 224. This exhibit 23. This is classroom 223. We have a side-by-side -side view of this. What do we see here? Um, once again, this is um, showing how the, a bullet would have struck the door. Um, this actual impression shows that the bullet hit something additional um, prior to hitting this door. So it's what we call a tumbling bullet. So instead of being like a round um, impression or a pattern where a bullet would be circular, the bullet has now changed its path and it's tumbling, so now it hit it kind of going sideways. And that's depicted on the right-hand side there that you can see the sticker that was placed below it. Here's exhibit 24. This is classroom 220. What do we see here? Um, once again, you can see there's a trajectory rod and the outside of the door showing the path of travel that the bullet was fired into room 220. And finally, exhibit 25. This is classroom 215. What do we see here? Um, once again, these are trajectory rods are just a different color because we ran out of pink, um, but we're on to orange trajectory rods that are fired into the window um, outside of room 215, showing that the bullets were fired from the outside to the inside of that room. Okay, thank you, sir. Now, did you come to learn that once the shooter reached rooms 213, 214, that he backtracked down the 200 hallway? I was told that information. Okay. Sir, did you process the men's bathroom? in the 200 hallway that was across from classroom 233? Uh, yes, I believe it was, it was either 233 or 231. It was in that same general area. The, the, the uh, camera person is asking when they can resume. After the next picture, Josh. Okay. okay. This is exhibit 26. So what do we see here? This is a photograph taken outside of that bathroom that we're talking of outside or across from 231. Um, you can start to see inside the bathroom there's a black backpack um, along with there's a, um, I believe it's a, a live round or a cartridge as we call it, just found outside of the bathroom. And then you can start to see that there's a large pool of blood inside of that bathroom area. And this is just the entrance to the bathroom itself from the exterior of the hallway. And did you come to learn this is where Justin Schilling was killed? Yes, I was. Did you also recover a fired shell or, or um, fired cartridge in this, this area as well? Yes, a fired cartridge case was located in this bathroom. Is that included in the count of 18 you described earlier? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, sir, you mentioned earlier the firearm was recovered. This is Exhibit 27. Is this a photograph right outside of that bathroom that we just saw? Yes, it was not taken by me because the firearm had been collected by the um, on-scene deputies when the suspect was apprehended. Um, but that is the firearm that you collected? That is correct. And it's a, a six-hour, nine-millimeter handgun? Correct. Now, based upon your crime scene investigation, how many times did the shooter fire that weapon inside Oxford High School on November the 30th? 32 times. And how, how many unfired rounds, how many bullets were recovered? 
either from that magazine or elsewhere? 18. So a total of 50 rounds of 9mm ammunition was taken to Oxford High School? That is correct. 